And Lisa, you spent time in in Afghanistan, embedded when you were were working uh, for the TV news. Uh, you understand that sort of place, that that circumstance. I've never been there. I have no ambition, never likely to go there. But it is just horrendous to think about the human misery that's now being played out, and a deliberate attack by a group that is more radical than the Taliban, saying the Taliban's not radical enough. Look, I said last week. I did in my view on, on Sunday night, and I very clearly said this is a crisis of Biden's making. It is unfathomable to, to comprehend how badly he has handled this. Number one, announcing the fact that you were going to withdraw your troops on September 11, the 20th anniversary, I think was just inviting trouble. And I know that we all spoke about that at length at the yeah. time. Yeah. And we've just been watching this unravel over the past eight days. So it was Sunday night a week ago that, that Kabul fell. And at that point, you know, jihadists around the, around the world must have been cheering because it was their victory, right? So it was it, this massive rush to try to get in there to get these people out. And the scene, the scene that got me, Gary, was the, it was an infant being passed up over a wall to a yeah. US, US Marine. And the desperation, it was bad enough. We saw people falling from the, the Twin Towers and, what, nearly 20 years on, you see people falling from a plane. They're desperate, that desperate. They know what the Taliban is. And now Biden, first of all, didn't expect Kabul to fall that quickly. Apparently his intelligence is that bad. And then second of all, there was this, oh, look, it's not going to be a, a terrorist hub again. It's not going to be, you know, they'll have control. He, he had a deal. He, it was OK. The, 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 the airport would be safe. The Taliban would somehow, you know, this new 2.0 moderate Taliban would usher people through to the airport. It would all be fine. What a load of nonsense. All yeah. we've seen is bloodshed and misery and people so desperate. They're standing in water up to their waist, which is, which is in sewage. Sur sewage water, it's, yeah. And, and now for, for, the, for the bombs to be detonated, and they were warned that a terrorist attack was likely. And, look, I was speaking to, as you said, I spent a month embedded with our troops in Afghanistan, and we came under rocket attack. So I had a, a couple of soldiers or veterans contact me during the week and said, look, you've seen more enemy fire than, than some of us have. And I, I cannot explain to you what that is like, and it is nothing compared to what our troops have been through. No. And now they're watching all of this unfold. It's re-traumatising them again because they are asking... Why was it worth it? And then well, we have the gall to send the SAS soldiers who have been had mud flung at them through this this ridiculous Brereton report, yeah. and we send them back into Afghanistan. Yeah. You know, it, Peter Dutton needs to, to show some real leadership on this because, look, Australia's luckily our guy, our, our star, our soldiers weren't at that gate, thankfully, but they were there only a few hours before. So they're going to now struggle with survivor guilt because. They were there and then they escaped it, um, while other US soldiers and Afghans didn't. It's, it's just diabolical.